In the previous video we talked about how nervous system works out and how to understand and memorize sympathetic and parasympathetic effects taking place in our bodies. Today we are going to talk about autonomic nervous system drugs in a simplified way. Be with me until the end of the video to know more about these drugs and memorize at a one time. Let's start. First we need to know the types of autonomic nervous system drugs. Second we need to know how the drugs acts. And third is the clinical uses of these drugs. Drugs affecting the autonomic nervous system are divided into two groups. That is according to the type of neurons involved in the mechanism of action. The cholinergic which are divided into cholinergic agonist and cholinergic antagonist. And the adrenergics which are divided into adrenergic agonist and adrenergic antagonist. Cholinergics activate receptors by acetylcholine neurotransmitters while adrenergics activate receptors by norepinephrine neurotransmitters. Before we jump into the drugs directly, let's understand a little more about the cholinergic neurons and cholinergic receptors. The presynaptic neurons of both parasympathetic and sympathetic and the postsynaptic neurons of the parasympathetic division use acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. The postsynaptic sympathetic division of sweat glands also uses acetylcholine. In addition, cholinergic neurons innervate the muscles of the somatic system and play an important role in the central nervous system. Cholinergic receptors Cholinergic receptors are divided into two groups based on their different affinities for agents that mimic the action of acetylcholine. Muscarinic receptors these receptors, in addition to binding acetylcholine also has a higher affinity to muscarine, an alkaloid in certain poisonous mushrooms and they also show only a weak affinity for nicotine, an alkaloid found in tobacco and other plants. There are five subclasses of muscarinic receptors, however, only M1, M2, and M3 receptors have been functionally characterized. Some receptors like M1, M3, and M5 produces excitatory effect while M2 and M4 produces inhibitory effect. For example M1 and M3 receptors excite the increase of peristalsis of gastrointestinal tract. Also M2 receptor has inhibitory effect on the heart and is responsible for the decreased heart rate in parasympathetic nervous system. M1 muscarinic receptor is located in stomach in the gastric ganglia, M2 is located in the heart, M3 is the located in the eye, gastrointestinal tract, urinary bladder, and lastly in glands, M4 and M5 are mainly located in the central nervous system. And that is for muscarinic receptors. Now let us check the other side of nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors. These receptors, in addition to binding acetylcholine, also recognize nicotine but show only a weak affinity for muscarine. Nicotinic receptors are divided into two types. NN receptors and NM receptors. The first one is NN which is located in autonomic ganglia in Th automatic nervous system. And the second one is NM which is located in the neuromuscular junction in skeletal muscles in somatic nervous system. And here we have a summarized chart of cholinergic receptors. Now we are ready to jump to the drugs. Cholinergic agonist. Cholinergic agonists promote the action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, these drugs are also called parasympathomimetic drugs because they produce effects that imitate parasympathetic nerve stimulation. Cholinergic agonists are divided into direct acting cholinergic agonist and indirect acting cholinergic agonist. Direct acting cholinergic agonist. Direct acting cholinergic agonists are usually administered topically, with eye drops. Orally and by subcutaneous injection, which begin to work more rapidly than oral doses. The cholinergic agonists rarely are administered by intramuscular or intravenous injection because they're almost immediately broken down by cholinesterase in the interstitial spaces between tissues and inside the blood vessels. Moreover, they begin to work rapidly and can cause a cholinergic crisis. A cholinergic crisis is a drug overdose resulting in extreme muscle weakness and possible paralysis of the muscles used in respiration.
The direct acting cholinergic agonists imitate acetylcholine by directly binding and activating the receptors. The direct acting cholinergic agonists drugs are acetylcholine, bethanicol, carbacol, sevamelin, methicoline, nicotine, and pilocarpine. Use the letters A, B, C, M, N, P to remember the drugs. Acetylcholine. Although it is the neurotransmitter of parasympathetic and somatic nerves as well as autonomic ganglia. It lacks therapeutic importance because of its diffuse effects and its rapid inactivation by the cholinesterases. Acetylcholine has both muscarinic and nicotinic activity. If injected intravenously, acetylcholine produces a brief decrease in heart rate and cardiac output. Mainly because of a reduction in the rate of firing at the sinoatrial node. And causes vasodilation and lowering of blood pressure, acetylcholine stimulates M3 receptors which increases salivary secretion, increases gastric acid secretion, and stimulates intestinal secretions and motility. In the eye, acetylcholine is involved in stimulation of ciliary muscle contraction for near vision and in the constriction of the pupillae sphincter muscle, causing meiosis. Acetylcholine is instilled into the anterior chamber of the eye to produce meiosis during ophthalmic surgery. Bethanicol Bethanicol lacks nicotinic actions, but does have strong muscarinic activity. Resistant to cholinesterase and it's orally active with a duration of action of 30 minutes to 2 hours. In urologic treatment bethanicol directly stimulates muscarinic receptors, causing increased intestinal motility. It also stimulates the detrusor muscle of the bladder which stimulate urination. Remember bethanicol acts on bladder that is it contracts urinary bladder in urinary retention. Therefore it is B for B, bethanicol for bladder. Carbacol. Carbacol has both muscarinic and nicotinic actions. Resistant to cholinesterase. Orally active with a duration of action ranging from 30 minutes to 2 hours. Carbacol has profound effects on both the cardiovascular and GI systems. It can cause release of epinephrine from the adrenal medulla by its nicotinic action. When administered into the eye, it stimulates the effects of acetylcholine which causes meiosis. Due to its high potency, receptor non-selectivity, and relatively long duration of action, carbacol is rarely used. Intraocular use provides meiosis for eye surgery and lowers intraocular pressure in the treatment of glaucoma. And we have methicoline. Methicoline acts on myocardium in muscarinic receptor M2. It's used in tachyarrhythmia. Nicotine. Nicotine is used to aid in smoking cessation in adults. Using a controlled amount of nicotine helps reduce nicotine withdrawal symptoms when you quit smoking. Do not use nicotine if you are pregnant or breastfeeding unless your doctor has told you to. Pilocarpine. Pilocarpine acts on pupil in muscarinic receptor M3 that is it activate meiosis in glaucoma. Remember P for P that is pilocarpine for pupil. Pilocarpine can cause blurred vision, night blindness, and brow ache. Poisoning with this agent is characterized by exaggeration of various parasympathetic effects, including profuse sweating and salivation. Some indirect cholinergic agonists, such as pyridostigmine, boost the effects of direct cholinergic agonists and increase the risk of toxicity. Also quinidine reduces the effectiveness of cholinergic agonists.